Hey, 42 here. During the Olympic finals, two ancient Greek pancreatriasts, essentially wrestlers, were caught in a struggle for victory. And one of them, Arachion of Figalia, was about to lose. Caught in a stranglehold and with almost no hope of freeing himself, Arachion struck out at his opponent with a terrible wild kick that he thought might earn him a slim chance of escape. But he ended up with more than he could have possibly anticipated. The kick earned him his victory. Crying out in pain from the terrible attack, his opponent immediately signalled to the umpires that he was defeated and Arachion was victorious. But Arachion would never realise this because his kick was so powerful and the stranglehold he was caught in was so tight that the combined force immediately shattered his neck and ended his life. So, he had met with victory, but also with death. It seems that the prospect of immediate painful and unavoidable death is on everyone's minds at the moment. Many are worried about coronavirus killing them or the global breakdown of society causing widespread chaos that could result in the end of the world. But what really is the probability of you dying today? Whilst it may seem like your death is always around the corner, is that actually the case? It turns out it's not actually very likely at all. The likelihood of your own death depends on your lifestyle, your habits, your psychology and your environment. So if you're morbidly obese, addicted to PCP, suicidal and live in northern Syria, your immediate chances of survival would probably be below average. But in general, if you aren't intending to harm yourself and you aren't currently struggling with a terminal illness, the odds of your death on a given day are extraordinarily low. The probability as a whole is around 0.0002%, which is astronomically unlikely. You are 8% more likely to win the lottery. And if you were immortal, meaning you didn't die of old age, you would probably live to be over 6,000 years old before your odds of unintended fatal injury caught up to you. Despite the fact that people fear catching a terrible plague or getting torn apart by bears, the most common causes of death aren't particularly exciting. As far as common deaths go, 23% of fatalities go to heart disease, another 22% to cancer, with Alzheimer's, diabetes, pneumonia and strokes all making an appearance. We all know, despite our irrational fears, that it's not very likely we'll die irrationally. You will probably die of an age-related illness like the vast, vast majority of the world. But that's boring. What if there were ways you could die that are so strange, so bizarre and disturbing that you'd never want them to happen to you? Well, there are plenty, and throughout history there have been some unbelievably weird recorded deaths. Take these examples. The first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, was so desperate to grant himself eternal life that he ingested several pills of mercury which, unsurprisingly, killed him almost immediately. Or there was the ancient Stoic philosopher Chrysippus, who, when seeing his donkey eating figs, roared, Now give him some wine to wash them down. He found his own joke so funny that he collapsed to the floor in uncontrollable laughter, had a fit, foamed at the mouth, and died. But now, I'm sure you're thinking, that's great, but I'm not searching for eternal life and I sure as hell don't own a donkey. All I do is sleep, eat, go to work, come home, eat, sleep and repeat. How could I die of something weird and bizarre? Well, you're about to find out. Let's start with eating. It isn't just toxic food that can kill you. The odds of dying from choking are about 1 in 2,600, with nuts and popcorn being common culprits. But you can also choke on other things. Now, before your dirty thoughts go wild, consider this story. The famous playwright Tennessee Williams choked to death on a bottle cap whilst trying to take barbiturates. There's also BPA poisoning. Bisphenol A is a poisonous synthetic chemical that can cause impotence and heart disease, released into your food by just about every plastic imaginable. But worrying about that is sensible and realistic. 
How about eating yourself to death? Is that possible? And if so, how would it happen? Well, yes, it is. A rare disease called Prader-Willi syndrome motivates you to do just that. It's the most common cause of morbid obesity. You can be motivated to eat so much that food and bile will start to seep into your abdomen. Your blood will turn septic. And without immediate surgery, you will almost certainly die. In fact, just this kind of death was what happened to Adolf Frederick, the King of Sweden. After stuffing his face with lobster, sauerkraut, caviar, smoked herring, champagne, and 14 servings of semler and hot milk, his digestion went into overload and he promptly died. But in consolation, he is remembered by school children all over the world as the king who ate himself to death. But maybe you're less gluttonous than King Frederick. Maybe you're more health conscious. Well, fear not, because there are some healthier ways to consume yourself to death as well. Take for instance, Basil Brown, who consumed so much vitamin A and carrot juice that his skin turned bright yellow and he died of liver damage. Or consider Tina Christofferson, who, in an effort to combat stomach cancer, drank 15 litres of water a day and died. But look, if all that doesn't frighten you, just consider that every day, your stomach is in a constant battle to not eat itself. Your entire digestive system is lined in mucus, which neutralizes your stomach acids and prevents your stomach and intestines from eating themselves. But if that mucus fails to do its job, you might just end up eating yourself alive from the inside out. That's exactly what begins to happen when you get a stomach ulcer. Now, what about walking or traveling to work? Is it possible to die doing that? Well, of course, but if we ignore the average of 3,287 people who die from road crashes every day around the world, and in the UK the minimum of one person who is run over and killed daily as a pedestrian, then yes, there are some other odd ways that your commute can finish you off. Who doesn't occasionally trip over? But that's mostly harmless, right? Well, Alan Pinkerton, the founder of the famous Pinkerton Detective Agency, was walking along in Chicago one day when he tripped over and bit his tongue. Then, soon after, his tongue became infected with gangrene and he died. But while simply walking to work, some truly unpredictable black swan event could very well come out of nowhere and end your life and there's very little you could do about it. For example, one day in Boston's North End, a large storage tank burst open, releasing an enormous wave of dark syrup that swept across the surrounding pavement, killing 21 people and injuring a further 150. It was later dubbed the Great Molasses Flood. However, if you don't enjoy syrup, you could always be drowned in a flood of beer, as happened during London's beer tsunami in 1814, when a brewery gave way. Or, failing that, you could simply be killed as a part of a strange series of completely bonkers events that defy all explanation, as happened in Buenos Aires. Unbelievably, a poodle fell 13 floors and landed on 75-year-old Marta Espina, killing both of them immediately. As the terrible crash was heard, Edith Sola, who was nearby, ran over to help, but was struck by a bus and was killed in the process. Then, another witness who was unidentified was so shocked by what he saw that he had a heart attack and died as he was rushed to the hospital. So you should be okay as long as you steer clear of poodles descending at terminal velocity. But surely you're safe when tucked up in bed, right? Think again. One disturbing mode of death is SUNS, Sudden Unexplained Nocturnal Death Syndrome. It is, as the name suggests, when you will suddenly die in your sleep for essentially no explainable reason. Or you could die from undetected carbon monoxide poisoning. Whilst awake, you'd be warned by feelings of dizziness or headaches. Whilst asleep, however, you would have no idea, and the gas would slowly suffocate you to death. 
Perhaps even more disturbing is how common carbon monoxide is, as it's present in cars, fireplaces, stoves, and much more. Thousands unwittingly die from this silent killer each year around the world. Perhaps a more likely way of dying in your sleep is through obstructive sleep apnea, where your breathing apparatus is obstructed during sleep. At least 22 million Americans suffer from sleep apnea, with countless others going undiagnosed. But it turns fatal when your obstructed breathing triggers an unknown but pre-existing condition, such as a high risk of heart disease. And it could kill you without warning, all whilst you're asleep. But all of those are less horrific than the following case. Thornton Jones was a lawyer in Bangor, Wales. One night he suffered an awful nightmare where he had taken a knife and slit his own throat. Waking up, he discovered blood pouring out of his actual neck and a deep cut sliced into his throat. With his life rapidly flowing from his body, he reached across for a pencil and paper and wrote, I dreamt that I had done it. I awoke to find it true. He died 80 minutes later, and an inquest found that he had committed suicide while suffering from temporary insanity. So when you go to sleep tonight, you best pray that you don't have the same awful dream. Now, we all spend a lot of time moving to and fro, eating and sleeping, but what about the other activities during your day? How could you die doing those? Well, it turns out there are plenty of lovely ways. Actor Anton Yelchin died checking his mail when his car rolled down a hill and crushed him against a brick wall. Jeff Darley and Peter Bukowski both died suddenly and seemingly without cause when they got a high score in the video game Berserk. Hitoshi Nakaida, a doctor in Texas, died at work when his head became trapped in his workplace elevator and it decapitated him. A 14-year-old boy also died at work when the pneumatic cylinder in his office chair suddenly exploded and killed him. Gary Hoy died at work when one of the building windows popped from its frame and sent him falling 24 stories to his death. And Larry Eli Mario Moncada died at work when he fell into a small 18-inch gap between the water cooler and the back wall. His body was discovered when the cooler was finally moved, almost 10 years later. Sergio Milan died hanging out in his flat when a gigantic metal plate was launched by a factory explosion, flew three kilometers through the air and crashed into his flat, crushing him. Edmund Ironside died on the toilet when an assassin hiding underneath stabbed him to death. Ouch! Jonathan Capewell died as a result of his personal hygiene. Due to his obsessive use of spray-on deodorant, he had 0.37 milligrams of butane per litre in his blood, 0.26 milligrams higher than the fatal dosage. Hon Steininger died as a result of his grooming habits when he tripped over his 1.4 metre long beard and broke his neck. And Jimmy Ferrozo died having sex with his girlfriend, when the grand piano he was having intercourse on began to extend on a hydraulic motor towards the ceiling, eventually pinning him and suffocating him to death. So yes, there are plenty of strange ways that you can die every single day, but thankfully, not many of them are very likely. As this has been a rather gloomy video, I want to end on one incredible anecdote that might just make you smile. During the persecution of Valeria, when Christians were being captured and executed en masse, the deacon, St. Lawrence, was caught and tortured over a giant grill, on which he was roasted alive. Legend has it that throughout the proceedings, he was such a badass that he joked with his tormentors saying, turn me over, I'm done on this side. Naturally, he is now the patron saint of cooks, chefs, and comedians. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really helps me to continue to make these videos. 
The link's in the description. Also, if you want to get your hands on a first edition signed copy of my new book, Sticker Flag in It, A Thousand Years of Bizarre History from Britain and Beyond, then head on over to Unbound Publishing. The link's in the description and get yours today. Thank you.